It's the Don't Make It Weird podcast. With your hosts, Daniel and Dina Soros. Hello, hello. Despite all of the evidence to the contrary, despite all the odds against us, this is the Don't Make It Weird podcast, and this is episode 10. You guys are still here. You're still listening, despite this being a terrible idea. But I love you guys no matter what. Canada, Belgium, Alaska, a couple of us still believe you exist. For those of you who don't know, I am one of your hosts, Daniel Quigley, and I am joined, as always, by the curly-haired heiress whose hectic hotness defies hyperbole, Dinosaurus. What is up? That was my new favorite intro. Um, I feel pretty good, though. Like, I shaved my legs today. I'm kind of tan. It's... I'm my I, I shaved leg. my legs today too, so this is a win. Same. Mm, uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. And as you can tell, freshly shorn is the only adult in the room. The man who makes us look good or me look really bad most of the time. Producer Sean. Hey, buddy. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Oh my goodness! I am so excited for today's podcast because this this is family time. This is us getting a chance to get back together. The three of us. We can have like a big group hug right now just like a yeah and and man we are gonna be talking about dialogue today we're talking about dialogue tags we've got even more stories for you and a brand new game segment that we're gonna be rolling out for the first time but before we do go any further dina remember that guy we had on last uh, last week what was his name i do oh my god i made such an ass of myself <laughs> i was so like I was so happy and like awestruck because he's so intelligent. And then I fucking lost the internet because fuck Florida. <laughs> like, By the way, we're talking about Chad Ryan because she can't even say his name right now. So, so no, hi, Chad. I can't. <laughs> hi, I'm sorry. So, for those folks who missed it, Dina, listen, she was a trooper. She had big time hurricanes because, listen, Florida doesn't do weather halfway. If, if Florida's going to have any weather, it's going to be like, Fuck you weather. That, that, that's what Florida weather is, is fuck you weather. Despite us dealing with some technical issues, we had the incomparable Chad Ryan on. We got to talk about his book, Ghost River. We got to talk about Lost Boys Press. Uh, we got to talk about, it's not called Chimichangas, Chad. It's Chimera. I prefer I Chimichanga. Yeah, Chimichanga is great. Yeah. We got to talk about that and the book coming up for presale. Well, no, no. You, right now, when you guys are listening, it's it is out right now. Yeah, it's available now. Yeah. Not meant for each other. Guys, there is so much good stuff coming out of there. And uh, Dina, what was your favorite part before you lost, you know, your internet in life of having chat on? Um. Well, you know, I did enjoy kind of freaking him out a little bit with my wine bra apparatus. <laughs> because, like, I could tell he didn't really know how to react. <laughs> And I really appreciated that. <laughs> yeah. But also, I just really like, he's so smart. He's so intelligent and he loves what he does. And you can tell. And it was just great. Oh, man. That was easily, easily one of my favorite interviews. Uh, definitely loved having Tortoise Talk. Yeah. I appreciate you guys uh, letting me have a minute to talk about Lenny. You mean an oh, hour? <laughs> Two hours of Tortoise Talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, Sean, producer Sean, you've been teasing this for, for like a week now. And, and me and Dina, are, are a little too excited. You said you have a surprise for us. I do have a surprise for you guys, and I'm super excited about it. I'm going to share my screen so you can see it. Ooh. It's, this is very fancy, okay? Oh, this is this is high level. Anyone who's not watching on YouTube, you can go fuck yourselves right now. <laughs> Always. We only like our YouTube listeners. <laughs> and here it is. Oh, my God. We have our new. Yes! Oh, my God. We have a. Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, we got our new graphics. Oh my god, you're in your underwear. Of course, yeah, no one ever wear pants. So for the folks that aren't watching on YouTube, A, you guys definitely need to be watching on YouTube. Sean just provided new graphics. They'll be up on our Twitter, up on all of our, our website. <laughs> we have Dina as a curly-haired velociraptor holding a wine. <laughs> yeah, I didn't we, even have we, to hit the button. <laughs> We have Dina as a curly-haired velociraptor, me in a pair of tidy whities just holding a beer. Um, pr pretty accurate, yeah. What? Uh, it's, it's a, a white, white claw dummy. I think. <laughs> and my shirt says yeah, words hurt because they do. Dina hurts my feelings a lot. And we have producer Sean uh, unable to make eye contact with us looking in another direction um, on the other side of our video. And it's... No, he's side-eyeing us. Oh, yeah, Can he you is. Can, is it too small? And my shirt. Can you tell what Dina's shirt says? My shirt says, 
I can tell what it says. No, can what does Daniel? it say? It says that's what <gasps> she said. Oh my god! <laughs> do I have to drink? Yeah, to that? you definitely do. I would. I would you definitely do. That. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So this is gonna be our new graphic. I am freaking excited. Oh man, this is good. This is good. Who made this for us, Sean? I was just gonna say. Ooh. Friend of the podcast, Anthony Lafusi is the artist in this oh, illustration. Wow. Go, Anthony! Dr. Starpuncher the Third Esquire. I don't say that last name anymore. Listen, Shannon <laughs> ruined that last name for everyone. So, so for the folks at home... <laughs> Way to go, Shannon. Anthony's screen or, uh, Twitter handle is Starpuncher. And he was doing that as a joke for, like, you know, the original name of Luke Skywalker was going to be Starkiller. And so he's like, oh, I'll be funny and call myself Star Puncher. And thanks to uh, Shannon B. Wrights. Uh, shout out, Shannon. Just our, like, every episode. Obligatory shout out. Shan yep, yep, bunch of Shan offs. Uh, Shannon, uh, let us know that the Urban Dictionary for um, Star Puncher is someone who is... Into butt stuff. Into butt stuff. <laughs> Dina, how does that yeah. make you feel? I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable <laughs> with... with I'm my feet and, <laughs> it's feet and the, the butt stuff. <laughs> All right. Daniel, drink. Daniel, drink. Daniel, drink. I'm not letting Wes get us. I'm not what doing happened? it. What happened? I missed it. it. <laughs> he I said feet. Oh. He yep. said feet. Good looking out. And you get a pass on that because you're calling him out. Yep. Um, <clears throat> oh, shit. No, I'm going to do it anyway. I don't care. So I was going to do where we fucked up last week, but Dina already brought up the fact that her wine bra exploded. <laughs> Yep. And the fact that oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> and the fact that her internet went out due to the shitty Florida weather. <laughs> the only other thing I can say, really, that we fucked up was the fact that we just kept going again. Such a good guest. Chad was great. By the time I looked at the clock, we were two hours over. And once again, I have a lot of work ahead of me. <laughs> I know we're making a lot of room. work for you. I mean, the funniest part is, is that like we ended the episode on like a relatively normal. It was long, but it wasn't like crazy long. But then, like, off air, we just started, like, chatting and talking. And and Chad's like, you yeah, know what? Just good. put this all in. So now Sean has to put this all together because it was that much fun. <laughs> but now we are going to try a new segment. Are you ready for this, Dina? Hold on, because I still haven't done my oh, oh, thing sorry, from yeah. oh, oh. West Calling. She's been out. practicing her shots, ladies and gentlemen. So she's about to take a shot for us and no way. judge her a little bit. Well, I'll yeah, cheers to see. that. Yeah, I'll cheers to that. I don't I don't think I'm actually gonna I mean, be able you. To just do think it. just be a pelican. You could do a halvesies yeah, and then yeah, finish yeah. it after. I'm I'm ready to accidentally spit oh on God. myself. Nope, Mm-mm. couldn't do it. Yeah. Listen, the key is get as little on your tongue as you can, just just straight to the back of the throat. Oh, Dina's struggling. This is bad. We might lose her. We might lose her. Now, for the folks at home that don't realize this, Dina already, (laughs) and listen, this is how much of a trooper she is. Uh, She's allegedly eaten uh, some badly expired meat and is just going for it on this show. You don't bring that up now while she's gagging already. This is her Michael Jordan flu game yeah. right now. She's battling oh my for God. you folks at home. This is what a warrior does. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, Dina, if you mess up. Do you up, have a uh, trash can nearby or a puke <laughs> bucket on hand? Okay. Yeah, it's under my desk because I'm convinced oh, that yeah. I might actually. Yeah, hey, listen, if Dina gets knocked out, uh, we're just going to bring uh, Mackenzie in here, who allegedly is watching us from the audience. So, yeah, we have one audience member, guys. Suck it. Two. Kelly's two? watching. Oh, we have two. Oh, hi, Kelly. Yeah. So, yeah. What did so I tell Kenzie you about did... addressing the audience? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Audience doesn't exist. Only only Canada exists. <sighs> hi, Canada. I'm thinking about you and your maple syrup. <laughs> All right, so All new right. game segment. All right, new game segment. I'm done. This is going to be called Build a Story. So it's kind of based off of just like, you know, we're, we're all authors here, or think we are, and we all think that this is a storytelling podcast in some way, shape, or form. So here's what's going to happen. My book yeah. is officially available. <laughs> so this is what's going to happen. Producer Sean is just going to give us a, a basic setting, a, a little prompt, you know, start us into wherever our journey leads us. I'm going to have 30 seconds to just take the story wherever my heart desires. I, I'm just going to wing it. We're, we're improving all of this. We've had no time to set up anything. Then Dina's going to tell, continue my story from wherever I left off for another 30 seconds. Then I'll come back on. She'll come back on. 
and wrap this story up. And we're going to see uh, what happens in this story. It could be funny. This could be totally lame and boring. We'll find out. Dina, how do you right. feel about this? You like your chances? I'm uncomfortable because you nope. know I hate improv. Yeah. So You uh, just yeah. got to say yes and... Isn't that isn't that the thing? Yes, yeah, and yes, I own from <laughs> whose line is in many ways. And so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna give this story a um, uh, a chance. Uh, Producer Sean, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Well, you know what? I'm not ready because I feel like there's something missing. I feel like if we're gonna have an epic story time, if we're gonna create the story on the spot, <gasps> who is that? Whose music is that? Shut yes. up! Is she really here? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Jess is here! Why is everyone Toby? What the hell? Jess with us! No, joining no, us for this very special segment of Build the Story. <laughs> we wanted to surprise you, Dina. We want to bring together. in your BFF. <laughs> That's so, I love it. So for folks at home, we're bringing back what our up? most popular guest, <laughs> the Twitter icon and legend. She got all dressed up for us today. Jess, how's it going, buddy? It's going good. I felt like we were t- cheating on Dina, though. I know. We were going behind her back. We were having like a... <laughs> yeah, now I'm like literally thinking like, oh my God, how many DMs have Not they very many. now? What the fuck? But listen, it was it's all true. for you, though. It was all for you, Dina. We were like, it you was. know what? We had to be very sneaky, it. and it, it did feel like dirty. It, did feel lit, it felt dirty, yeah. I only did this because you're my world, Dina. Wait, because I have... I have access to the Twitter account. Jess, and tell I her how I got the, around that. Um, Sean used his personal account. <laughs> yeah, he thought Bastard. about that. Yeah, and burner phones. I mean, it was it was a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And, and so, Jess, before I get started, before we do this game, so I know I explained Sorry. it to you off air. How's Frank doing? Did he, does he, does he think about he me? He is good. He's sleeping. <laughs> does he think about me? <laughs> He does. Every time he scratches his butt on my rug. <laughs> Every time he scratches a butt on my Perfect. rug. That is excellent. That's <laughs> what love rug. is. And, and is. Oh, man. <clears throat> All right. So here we go. Now there's going to be three of us doing this game. I will go first. Dina will go second. Jess third. We're each going to go twice. And Jess is going to bring us home. And we're going to see where this okay. story journey takes us. Everyone ready? No. All right. All right. Perfect. All right. Let's see. That's too happy. <laughs> the drama music. Yep. This is what I usually use for Dina's story time. Does this work for you guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Does this work yes. for you? Yeah. That voice works for me, Dina. <clears throat> no. Oh, stop it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Daniel? Yeah. Your fortune cookie was oddly specific today. Go to the lake in the woods behind your house and fish with no bait. Ooh, ooh, that's good. So go to our fortune cookie is oddly specific. All right. All right. So are you going to cue us up on the clock, baby? Yeah. 30 seconds. Go ahead. All right. So my fortune cookie was oddly specific today. Told me to go out behind the back of my house, the lake and fish with no hook. Now, the problem is... I don't know when the last time I had Chinese was, and I don't speak the language that was on that paper, but I understood it perfectly well. I walked out behind the back of my house. I didn't have pants on, because fuck it, what am I going to do with pants? I throw <laughs> my, my, my reel into the, into the lake. Literally the whole damn thing. The whole thing. And that's it. Who's next? Dina. Oh, no. Dina? So I have nothing. Hold on. I'm literally blanking. I have absolutely nothing. <laughs> so he I cast thought he had his a line. I literally, thought he had a but no, minute. I threw the whole, no, it's 30 seconds. Oh, he threw the whole yeah. rod into the yeah. lake. Was that 30 yeah. seconds? That was 30 okay. seconds. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 I got to. Okay. Are we? Uh, okay. Ready? Okay. Go. So he cast the whole reel into the lake, but it comes out of the water with a hand, a woman's hand. Carrying it over her head. She comes out. She's got like a seashell bra on, but she's not a mermaid. She's got like a flowy skirt. And she's super, super pale. The next thing you notice is she's got gills, like actual gills, and she's still holding it over her head. And I don't know how much time I have left because I don't have any dialogue for her. All right. But Jess. <laughs> uh, she seconds. says, Hello, Daniel. 
I am the sexy manatee of your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that you have a special quest. And it is to find the treasure that is buried exactly 140,000 paces from your home. Oh, right. Daniel. And just quick aside, I want to go three rounds because I think this is going quick enough that I don't want to just end it at two. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. 30 <laughs> seconds. So oh, yeah. I look at the manatee. I look soulfully into her eyes. I, I push on one of its wrinkly folds. And I know, I know it's singing to me. The problem is, I don't know how to count that high. So I just fart, start fucking walking. I just start walking. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, a thousand fucking paces. What is a pace? We're American. We don't use that sort of metric system here. And that's when I saw my worst nightmare. A man staring at a magazine full of feet. Feet everywhere. Drink. Oh. Dina. 30 seconds. The ma- oh, it started. I'm sorry. I was waiting for a countdown. Oh, no, no, no. The man was looking at the magazine filled with feet. And then uh, he takes off his shoes and he he says that to get to the treasure, you have to kiss his feet. That's what I got. <laughs> and no. Jess. 30 um, seconds on the clock. So Dan's like, okay, well, I guess I got to kiss his feet because I really want this treasure because the sexy manatee told me about it. <laughs> um, so Dan puckers up. He licks his lips because they're dry so that, you know, you don't want to kiss feet with dry lips. Um, and the man lifts his foot <laughs> and Dan puckers up and he leans down. And then he gets a little closer. Excellent. The foot. <laughs> excellent, excellent way to use your time <laughs> right really there. Just really putting Just passing it on suspense. to Dan. That was incredible. Okay, Daniel, 30 seconds. This is the last round. And that's when, as soon as my lips touched the feet, it changed. It shimmered like a shimmera into a fuck squid. Shout out, Chad Ryan. <laughs> It now had tentacles everywhere. It ripped off my clothes. It was trying to probe in every direction. Oh my God. I had no idea what to do. I call out for help. I use my air horn to bring in my savior, the only person that could save me from the fuck squid, and find the treasure. But what happened? It was quiet. Quiet everywhere as I waited and hoped as it... Okay. <laughs> Dina? 30 seconds. And from the, and from the tree line... <laughs> <laughs> there came the ter- the two Tyrannosaurus Rexes that oh, were gonna repopulate the entire dinosaur the population. Here they are, and they're here to save fan Dan. service, baby. I love it. <laughs> they're here to save Dan from the evil Shimmera that is now transforming not into a fuck squid anymore, but. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh, stop, stop. Jess, what's oh. it transforming into? 30 From seconds. From a fuck squid, it changed into <laughs> Dina. <laughs> and <laughs> Dina says, thanks for kissing my foot, you fucking weirdo. Um, and they reach. she reaches out and she holds Dan's hand and also the two tri... tri- Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rexes? Mm-hmm. And Tyrannosaurus they all Rexes. say that the real treasure was the friends that we made along the way. <laughs> yes! Unbelievable. Wow. Yes! Wow. <laughs> wow. That was beautiful. It was a heartwarming yeah. story. Everything happened. In that happy that was be- <laughs> <laughs> That could not wow. have gone better. <laughs> <laughs> okay first of all yes i knew you were the missing ingredient. first of all yeah jess thank you for joining us you do have to drink three to times here. though for all the f words you yeah. dropped during that story yep. oh and yeah quickly has to, has okay. to drink a couple too i'm just gonna yeah dina's already paid for her sins yeah i was on it she she drank every time she said it yeah, in I the wasn't. middle of her story west <laughs> 
<laughs> it gave me more time, and also Wes is not about to get me again. Not about. Uh, he's been messaging me, and no, it's on. I'm not going to let him get it. All right, so by the time the folks see this episode, Jess, your story mm-hmm. in Not Meant for Each Other is going to be out. Tell us, just just give us a little bit more of a taste. Tell the people about the anthology. Tell the people about your story. Yes, so anthology is about people being not meant for each other. So the goal when I was writing it was to either write an ending that would be um, – they wanted to use the reader to be elated that the couple didn't end up with each other or um, devastated. So I went with devastated because that's my Naturally. Um, You're here So to yeah, that trauma. is, yeah. So um, yeah, it's, it's going to hurt, but it's going to hurt good. I hope. And that, that is what I'm going so for. Good. Yeah, man. So you guys have got to check it out. You've got to check out anything that Jess writes because she's a best friend of the podcast. I'm going to try to find any excuse I can to bring her back on at any point in time. <laughs> Jess, we love you. Where, where can the folks find you on Twitter? Uh, you can find me at Jess LT Writes. Jess LT Writes, Jess the Mess. Check out all of her haikus. They're fucking amazing. And the best puns on Twitter. <laughs> they really are. And the best puns on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Not buns, you sickos, with a P. All right. I mean, you know, I'm sure your buns are nice too. I just don't feel like that's just it. the best knees. Yeah, I have bad knees. knees. I have I terrible knees. knees. You were really weird about yeah. my knees. But yeah. I, he's weird one, about elbows yeah. and knees, I mean, okay? He were. thinks that feet people are bad. <laughs> yeah. Elbows and knees are his. I, is this like an actual thing for you, Daniel? Because that's Well, the elbows annoying. absolutely is. Elbows the most erotic part uh, of the human body. Uh, no. Um, oh, wait. That's not part weird of the Weird is no, fair no, game, no, baby. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> But but here's the thing is that this is Jess's fault though because she made a post one time where she's like, yeah, I have the weirdest knees. No one should ever look at my knees. And yeah, then I was like, knees. I have to, I got to know. Yeah, see, <laughs> they're knobby. <laughs> but Daniel, my knees. No, I have really weird knees. <laughs> your knees. Fine, no, my knees are worse <laughs> like, than your knees. My knees are. Oh, my knees are they're Lord. like no, they look like they're trying to escape knees. my body. <laughs> um, but Daniel, my knees are your knees. So we have joint. Company. We have joint joint knees. Oh my like, god! Yeah, was it? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> that joint? Incredible. <laughs> this is the dream come true. All right, Jess, we love you, buddy. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Jess, the mess, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Bye, bye, you guys. Bye, Jess. <laughs> Don't make it weird. Presents. Good cop. Bad cop. All right, you scumbag. Tell me where you got the plants. I, uh, I got a local store, brah. Uh, you know, small family-owned business. You wouldn't know about it. I see. What was the shop's name? Uh, <clears throat> Humi Deppet? I see your Twitter bio says you support small businesses, but I didn't see you tweet anything on National Small Business Day. You liar! I'm sorry, buddy. She didn't mean that. You thirsty? Do you want some tea? <clears throat> oh, oh my, oh my god, this is salty. Is this, is this olive juice? Take those stupid glasses off and answer the question, bitch. Um, now listen, listen. My my Twitter was broken that day. I I, I tried to. I, I wanted to. What are you stuttering for? Are you one of those prop lifting tweakers? It's okay, partner. Relax. That's odd. I saw you tweet about how much you loved olives on hot dogs. In fact... There's a video of it right ah. here. What's up, honey people? It's your boy, Dank here, and I'm getting on the hot olive trend. I, I, I was hacked. I was hacked. I would never. I, I don't like olives. I see. Where'd you get the plants? I want answers. Tell me where you got the plants from or the orange apron gets it. I just wanted to be cool. I just wanted to fit in. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I just want to be awesome like just the best. 
That's what I thought. Pathetic. Everyone knows for quality plants, they should shop at ML's Garden Shop using the promo code WEIRD to get 10% off their first order. Not at some pathetic leech on society like a box store. Cut the cameras. I know how to make people like him talk. Visit ML Garden Shop on Etsy and use promo code WEIRD at checkout for 10% off your first order. Thank you to ML Garden Shop for supporting our show. That was awesome. Did we get you, Dina? Did we get you? (laughs) You did. I was like, why is there another bubble? Like, Mackenzie, go away. Like, you're not allowed to pop up right now. What are you doing? (laughs) And I kept, like, counting, too, because, like, Mackenzie keeps coming in and out of the audience. And I was like, five, six, five. There shouldn't be five. What? And I was like, oh. Um, All right. So it's time to get on to our topic of the day. We are going to be discussing dialogue tags. And this came up on Twitter like a little, like, you know, a couple weeks ago. And and, and apparently it's like a huge controversial subject. And me being the caveman that I am, I'm just like, I'm just going to write things. I don't, I don't know technical crap, um, which is probably why I'm not a published author. Yeah, um, same. (laughs) Tell me about dialogue tags. What does it mean? Like, give us a definition so, so the folks at home know what we're talking about. So all of this started because Daniel and I were very confused because we did not realize that there was a difference between dialogue tags and I I forget the name of the other thing. Do you remember dialogue tag versus? (laughs) Oh, you don't remember. I'm so glad you guys did your research for this segment. (laughs) We are so professional. (laughs) I did. I forgot that I was going to compare it. So a dialogue tag is like your... You've got your little quote for what your person is saying, and then you end it with a he said or she said or things like that. And then the opposite is where it's like giving the emotion where um, he grimaced uh, as yeah. his voice rose several oct. Yeah, his voice rose several octaves. Uh, his eyes flashed with anger. That's yeah. not a dialogue tag. And then you have dialogue tags. And one, the whole thing started because one is supposed to be capitalized after and one is not supposed to be capitalized after your quote. So that's what started this. And we had no idea. Yeah. But then, but then like, here's the thing is that it, it got crazy because then people started talking about, well, sometimes like I, I know there's like a whole school of thought where in any dialogue, don't give emotion. Don't tell us, you know, he, you know, he shouted mm-hmm. with glee. It's yeah. he said, she said. He shouted, she shouted, like, just basic and simplified. And, like, how do you feel about that, Dina? Because that, like, weirds me out. I fucking hate it because when I'm writing and when I'm reading, I don't like to just read he said. Okay. He he said what? Like, I mean, I know what he just said. But, like, I want to know if he's angry. I want to know his facial expressions. I want to know that he's ready to punch out a wall, like... I want to know that he stepped towards her and the lust was the so, lustly. I don't know, it permeated the air. Like, lustfully. Yeah, like, I want to know that stuff. And I'm, I've am i been reading books ever since this came to my eyes or <laughs> understanding my or whatever the fuck. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, it's really fucking boring when you just do, he said, she said, for everything. And, like, when they don't break up the dialogue and have like that emotion, like he stepped forward and then he finished his sentence. Like, like it's really like I think about it. Like I like to visualize everything that I see in a book. Like like could I see this in a TV show? Could I see it in a movie? Um, you know, and and, and so for me, it's, even right. if you and me are just sitting on a couch, just having casual conversation, there's so many tiny details that go into it. Like yeah, he leaned forward, you know, stared at the sky because he was upset or bored or whatever. Like even in casual conversation. That doesn't seem like a lot's going on in any interpersonal communication. There's always something, and so I feel like it's lacking. Like, it, like I almost feel like you take all the emotion out of the writing, and it's just like. And Dina looked at Daniel and said, "Hi." Daniel looked back at Dina. Hello, and you're just like, "What? What?" <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Oh, I remember this started <laughs> because we were watching TikTok, and somebody was like talking about how their editor 
wanted them to take out all of their non-dialogue tags and just do dialogue tags. He said, she said. That would drive me insane. Like that. That would dri- I mean, because that's just not how people communicate. And then there was like yeah, the weird uh, one. Remember Kirsten was telling us like about it. it. Shout out TWC. <laughs> where like, there's even like a style of writing what now up? where they're getting rid of quotation marks. Like they're just like, yeah, fuck it. Quotation marks. That's not part of dialogue anymore. Like what the hell? Mm-hmm. Dude, I don't get it. Like, I feel like writing is taking this huge shift. Not that I'm a super big experienced editor, publisher, whatever. But, like, I feel like it's taking such a dramatic turn and twist towards this robotic style. And it's so rule-based. And those of us that did not go to school to become yeah, writers and, and, and like, can't keep up. Like, I'm sorry and, and like, I didn't go know, to school Chad, for that. Chad in the last episode said a really good thing. But I, I, I agree with, for the 90% 90, 90 of it, where he said that, In order to break the rules, you have to know the rules. Like, you have to know enough about writing style and all that stuff to purposely break them. Like, I get that these things are there for a reason. Like, you don't want to just, you know, go off Mm -hmm. crazy. But it's also, like, creative writing is supposed to be just that, creative writing. I originally thought, like, when when I was first out of high school, Sean can tell you, my first thing is I was like, I want to be like a sports reporter. I want to be like a, you know, a writer in, in yep. covering sports. Sports journalism was his yeah. thing for sure. And and I love sports and I'd be good about talking about it. But Damn. the problem is, is that all that journalistic writing, it's everything is very formula based. Like you have to write it in an exact sp- specific way. You don't want a bunch of flair. Like it needs to be reporting the news. And I get it. And it makes sense. And for that genre, you should. But for me, I'm like, right. I felt so restricted and mm-hmm. caught in. And I'm like, this is my outlet. When I write, I just want to write what the fuck feels right to me in that moment, you know? Right. Yeah. No, I get that. It's just, I mean, I get where Chad's coming from because yeah, absolutely. you do want to know what rules are breaking. And like, as a, I mean, I, I've written my whole life, but like, I've never actively pursued publishing until after my dad died because my dad, like one of the last conversations that we had was that he wanted me to get back into writing and he wanted me to make it a thing. He wanted me to be successful. So after he died and I like, at the time I told him, I was like, yeah, I'll get there eventually. It's fine. So after he died, I was like, fuck now I got to do it. And I've always, I've always written. However, now that I like, I'm actively pursuing publishing. I'm like, (laughs) Oh my God, there's so many fucking rules. If you don't go to school for this, you're not going to fucking know. And then those of us that just like pursue this as something that we love, that we want to make and share with the world. Like, I'm not trying to become a writer and be like uh, the next JK Rowling. Like, I I don't think that's feasible for that's she's the 1%. And I get that. But I I would like to get published and, you know, share my work with other people because that's my heart and soul. And I want to do that for people. I don't know exactly. all the rules, so I don't Hopefully know what we have an breaking. editor that, that's okay with, you know, <laughs> reining us in and, you know, making sure we're breaking the right rules. Like, again, like, I don't want to just be yeah. insane about it. I want it to be something that's easily right. publishable. But I think that, like, the thing that I've found sometimes with the writing mm-hmm, community, mm-hmm. again, this is not a subtweet. I'm not talking about anyone in particular, I swear to God. But, like, you know, when you see these takes that are, like, posted sometimes, and it's just, like, there's almost, like, this gatekeeping, like, uh, hipster <laughs> element where it's, like, Listen, this is the right way to do it. Anyone that doesn't do it this way, go fuck yourself. And it's like, you know, there's a huge difference between yeah. how Hemingway wrote and let's say like Tolkien wrote. Like, there's not one right answer. And, you know, I'll put some goddamn quotation marks on it if I want to put some quotation marks on it. And if I want to say love this, quotation sh- marks. It's right. And if I want to bellow angrily in Dina's face instead of saying he <laughs> yelled, I'm going to fucking bellow. <laughs> right. all right so dina it is time for our next segment and and i'm excited about this and i totally fucked up our tiebreaker because jess was going to be the tiebreaker to tell us which story we wrote so yeah (laughs) somebody text her real quick message her real quick Pause. Jess, come back. <laughs> Should we bring her back in? <laughs> Go bring her back in. You know what? You know All what? Right, I could do a coin flip real quick. Yeah, let's get a coin flip and we'll pretend this is Jess's answer. <laughs> All right. So um, heads will be dumpster diving in the attempted kidnapping and tails will be Dina's first date with her husband. Okay. I'm doing a virtual right. coin flip. I just did a random Google search for it. Here we go. Ooh. Coin flipping music. And it's Tails. So, Dina's story time will be her first date with her husband. 
Yeah. I like this because she, Dina, set us up. Because I, from what I recall, this was another fake relationship. (laughs) It was. Hold on a second. Okay. Hold on a second. You're missing something really important. Oh. Yes. Oh, I didn't know we were actually starting the story now. He said set us up. So yeah, I was just mean? setting that up. But Fine. <laughs> Fine, Fucking I didn't want to do my voice anyways. Sean, shit. So set Fun. us up. All right, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Dina, as I recall, there may have been another fake relationship in your repertoire. Set us up. Give us the, get, tease us on what the story is going to be for us. So, <clears throat> my, um... My husband and I's first date, I count it as our first date because our our real first date sucked. <laughs> um, it was actually a ruse. It was a setup to help me make another guy jealous. <laughs> Excellent. Bring us yeah. in, baby. Baby's Sean, by the way. Oh, so so now you want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now <laughs> I want you. Now I want you, love. That's what she said. Yeah. It's story time with Dinosaurus. We're going back in time, but like not that far. So it's just like, <laughs> like it's not, it's six, six years, <laughs> seven years. Uh, <clears throat> it is Valentine's Day, February 14th. And I decided to confess my feelings for the guy that I had a crush on for like over a year. Fuck you, Anakin. Yeah, Anakin. That's his nickname. So, like, no, nobody knows what his actual name is, but I did call him Anakin a lot. So now he knows who he is. I'm going to call him Annie from now on. Okay, that's fair. We can call him Annie. (laughs) Fucking deserves that nickname. Anyway. Now that you're bitter. um, We worked together, and... My husband was actually my supervisor, like my boss. So um, <laughs> he had asked me out several times before this, too, and I kept saying no. So mm, again, we're borderline. If this is appropriate behavior, please don't do this at home. Anyway, <clears throat> I had taken Annie on our lunch break, and we were sitting in like this, uh, our favorite high top together because we were really good friends. And, <laughs> and he, uh, I was like, hey, um, I really want to talk to you about something. And he was like, no. <laughs> I was like, no what, bitch? And he said, don't do this. Don't do this. I was like, don't do what, motherfucker? You don't even know what I'm going to do. I do <laughs> like, anything right now. He was like, yeah, like you have no clue, okay? <laughs> And he was like, no, I'm serious. Don't do this. Don't ruin this. I was like, well, now I'm going to fucking do it because you said that I was going to ruin it. Like, <laughs> Number one, how dare you? <laughs> so I I definitely knew he was about to reject me, but I didn't give a fuck. I was like, full steam ahead. Fuck you. You cannot predict what I was going to say, even though I know that you just did. And also, like, don't tell me. <laughs> even though you're right, I don't want you to be right. <laughs> yeah. Mm, fuck our friendship at this point. And I was like, hey, I, I like you, and I, I want to go on a date. And I feel like I had a whole speech, but I blacked out a little bit. Yeah. So at the end of that, he basically said, <laughs> no, I'm not interested, but do you want to go to my Valentine's Day party together tonight? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I want to be seen too. with you, but I don't want to be Wait. with you. Yeah, literally. I okay. Wait, I gotta try to recreate my face. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, this is the, this is where oh I would no, love. Oh no, my break's over. I would love to see like the Kelly from the opposite thing. No, well, I have one question. Number one, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> um. So our break was over, and I immediately went into the back, and I was talking to you know hot boss that kept asking me out but I thought that he was over it by now because uh, I rejected you three times motherfucker you gotta be over it anyone right? who like, knows anything pursuing... about fantasy magical <laughs> rules is that the rule of three once something's been said or done three times it either happens or it's impossible to happen so you're right you're right so I went into the back and I was like trying to keep my shit together and not cry 
and there's like we work in a kitchen so there's like fucking beepers and everything going off and I'm the only female in the entire kitchen so everybody's like oh my god a girl's crying what do we do <laughs> <laughs> and like I'm usually like one of the bros it's fun doesn't matter and so I'm like sitting in the blind spot of the cameras on the counter crying my eyes out and I'm like block the door block the door don't let him back here because he worked up front and uh so yeah I looked up as <clears throat> my future husband walked over and he was like what's the matter and I was like I have a plan <laughs> <laughs> that was terrifying we went from like sniffling crying to we're choosing violence today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, <clears throat> I was like, so you're over me, right? It's like, uh, yeah, totally, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm over you. I'm a fucking yeah, liar. No one's ever allowed and to I, be I over you. I took him Dina. at face value. <laughs> Never. My ex boyfriend has not dated anybody in seven years. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, uh, where was it? Oh, he was like, yeah, I'm totally over you. And I said, all right, then this is what just happened, and this is what we're going to do. You're going to be my date to tonight's party that motherfucking Annie is throwing, okay? He was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll pretend to be your date. That's fine. Looking back, I don't think he actually said, I'll pretend. I said, yeah. pretend. He did not say, pretend. So, <laughs> like, eight this hours This is like later, fingers crossed. Like I'm, like, I'm picturing, like, no-take backsies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like he probably did. <laughs> Psycho. Um, he showed up to pick me up after work. I changed in the bathroom at work and did my makeup or whatever. He showed up in his little sports car, and he had flowers and chocolate and a card. And I was like... Oh, he went all in! Yeah, he did. And I was like, Tim... At the time, I called him Tim, yeah. not Timothy, because, you know, wife yeah. leveled up. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, makes sense. So <laughs> I was like, Tim, you know that, like, this is fake, right? He's got, like, this big doofy grin. <laughs> if you know him, like, he's a nerdy video gamer. <laughs> and he, he's like, yeah. <laughs> Did he give you totally. finger guns? Like, yeah, bang. <laughs> <laughs> His hands were full, but later on in the night, he did. <laughs> Wait, no, he actually um, gave you finger guns at some point in the night? later in the night yeah because so i get in the car i like take this shit first of all i don't like cards i don't like flowers and i don't oh, like he's chocolate. doing great that yeah. was rule number one when we actually started dating i don't like those things cards are wasteful flowers die and i don't like watching them die and i don't like chocolate so don't do okay that. but hold on it, what if he like made you a card instead of buying like a store-bought hallmark <laughs> this motherfucker would never uh, make me game a card. on i'm just saying if he did like this is a hypothetical right mm-hmm is it just wasteful because it's a, it's like corporate garbage that someone else writes and then you buy it to give yeah, to someone? Yeah, I would probably, would it, yeah. It I would, would mean a lot save. more, right? So shout... Yeah, I would probably save a real uh, card. So shout out to uh, Timuranja. That's my secret name for him. Um, Tim, okay. Timuranja, I need you to like make my girl Dina, who is my world, a card. Okay, so she can't throw it away. Yeah. Um, he totally watches so, this podcast, by the way. Not a chance in hell. He already said he would d rather die. <laughs> that's so that's, fine. that's love. It's it's cool. I understand. He listens to me all day. It's fine. Anyway, um, <laughs> my he, wife uh, is the same way. By the way, <laughs> we're like walking. Yeah, I I totally get it. I wouldn't listen to my husband if he made yeah. a podcast either. Um, we're walking into the party, and he like opens the door for me. And as we're walking in, I was like, "You still know that it's fake." right? And he goes, yeah, <laughs> just like the finger gun thing. And I was like, okay. So we walk in and immediately like he puts his hand behind my back, like to walk in together. And I'm just like, why are you touching me? And he's like, we have to sell it. Gotta sell it. Gotta sell it. So we're sitting, yeah, gotta sell it. We're sitting there. He's being really passive aggressive to Annie and Annie's being really passive aggressive to him. And like Annie won't acknowledge his existence and he keeps trying to talk to me, but every time like Tim walks over and he's just like, Sup, bro? <laughs> like he's he's pulling it off really well. And like I know that Annie is scared of Tim because he's way taller, he's way stronger, he's very intimidated, yeah, and I know that. So I think it's fucking hilarious. And at one point in the night, Annie is like just watching us like a child, like staring at us. And Tim goes, 
you know what would really sell it? And I was like, what? Like, I don't want to be around him. <laughs> I just I just want Annie to be jealous. That's all I care about. And he's like, yeah, we should we should kiss. That would really sell it. So then I slapped him. <laughs> and then, then, yeah, because we know how the first kiss actually went with you guys. So, <laughs> I mean, so you guys no, are basically like the romance really trope that actually happened. Like fake relationships, sell it in real life, and then end up mm-hmm. married together. Yeah, we really are. That That's incredible. That's incredible. So for Annie all you romance pissed. trope haters, I loved it. <laughs> Did, I, yeah, like, if Shannon, his name was, you trope hater. Yeah, like, listen, if his name was actually Annie, I would just hope someone came up to him and was like, Annie, are you okay? Would you tell us that you're okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is incredible. So this is how the foundation of your relationship started, and I love every little bit of it. Yeah. <sighs> all right. So... I've been torturing Dina and all of our guests for a long time, and it's been a while since I've had to read one myself. But Dina, you th- you have a very special uh, steamy romance read for me. Is that right? I got it. So I've been told from producer Sean, I laugh too easily and I never make it through. So I have to be very professional. Yeah, you know what? You this. harass Dina to keep her sultry mirror voice on for the entire time. <laughs> you need to be able to do that, too. I, I don't know, but I don't have a sexy voice like that. Like, the best I've heard my Dude, voice described is kind of Seth every Rogan-ish. time. That's listen, not a sexy... <laughs> listen. Yes, you're very Seth Rogen-ish, all right? But listen. <laughs> you always start every one like, oh, so this is happening. And then you'd lose it three words into it. So just right, keep so it I, going. Yeah, I need to go full Val Venus. Also... Man. Yeah, Val Venus, exactly. Exactly. You know what I want? You know what my, I want that's going to help me get in this mood? For my background, can you give me some Val Venus? Oh my god. No, I have to prep ahead of time for that, man. I can't I just do it, it on the fly. We have time. I need I need Val Venus. Oh, Sean. we have time. Okay. Yeah, we, we have, have we time. Have time. We need, I need Val Venus, Sean. Also, my sultry mirror voice isn't actually sexy. It's super sexy, Dina. I'm sorry. I don't mean this in weird ways. No one not. thinks that they're at, no one thinks that they're sexy. No yeah, one thinks that true. anything they do I is felt sexy. Like I was and no one I should. Because really. I was doing it like mockingly. Yeah, no, it's, I it's, didn't realize that it was actually. I'll use that next time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You should try that on uh, Timaranja and let me know how it goes. Yeah. What? Where did that how name come know? from? Because here's the I thing is know. I usually like putting in, you know, an Othi on yeah, the end drugs. of people's names like Shaunathy or, but you can't do that. You, can't, you can say Timothy Othi. Timothy Othi. So we just went to it. <laughs> so yeah, it just became Timaranja. Timurad. That's a natural progression from Timothy to <laughs> you can't add a the to it. So Aranja is the Aranja. next step, obviously. Yes. obviously. <laughs> that's, that's my transition. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, it works even for Dina. Dina Ranja. Dina Ranga. Dina Ranga. Oh, and where everything leads back to chimichangas. It's true. It does. All right. So did you everything say- leads back to Peter right. or Sean? To All right. Book yes. two. I'm All right, ready. ready. All right. So to get me in the mood, to keep me here. Hello, ladies. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. So this is The Food of Love by Anthony Capella. She gnawed na- she na- on Tommaso ravenously, like an animal plundering a carcass. And when she had enough of that, she swung her leg over him, and like a rider swinging into a saddle and galloped, she was a ri- she was riding naked on a big horse among a pack of hunting wolves at night. <laughs> okay, so she was riding on a what? <laughs> uh, riding on a big horse among a pack That's of two. hunting wolves. <laughs> oh fuck! And and. <laughs> Yes. And you set me up for that, so that means that I have to drink Absolutely. extra. Jesus Christ. See, Dina thinks she's not good at this, but you nailed it. That was great. Because I have yeah. so many questions. I picked that out before we had buzzwords. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know what Google searches you did to find that one. Yeah. Horse and sex. Wait. <laughs> Again? God damn it. Horse around. Mm. <laughs> Wait. Okay, yeah. I got to do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean... <laughs> Wait, did you drink again because you said it yes, too? Yes, yes, I did. We're not letting okay, whiskey okay. this. But I love it because she... 
I don't know if I ever want a girl to gnaw ravenously. Right? <laughs> like, like, because animal Listen. plundering a carcass is, is a very distinctive Everyone thing. has their thing, all right? <laughs> I mean, that's like... For some people, like, it's I, feet. Uh, Fuck. For some people, it's gnawing ravenously. <laughs> On, like a plundering animal carcass. And then, here's the thing. It's one thing to, like, you know, use the analogy of riding him like uh, that four-legged creature. But she's riding him like that four-legged creature with a pack of wolves. Does that mean there was an audience? Like, a bunch of people, like, che- like just, like, actively cheering you on? Like, yeah! I yeah! Just assume- <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed she was, like, in a, in a panic. I, don't, I didn't think about an audience. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a pack of hunting wolves, so, right, like... Like, I feel like that would be the most yeah. disconcerting thing, like, to have, like, a crowd cheering you on during, like, sex. It's like, go, Daniel! Wait, what culture, what culture is it that does that where the first night everybody listens at the window because they're, like, married as virgins? I feel like... Since you're bringing it up, I'm assuming it's a biblical thing. <laughs> it's gotta be biblical. <laughs> that sounds like some Game of Thrones shit right there. Did this happen on Noah's Ark? <laughs> with the, with the cubits? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it might have. Oh, fucking hell. It, <laughs> it might have been like an ancient Jewish thing, like honestly. I'm Jewish. I haven't heard about this, but I'm interested now. We're gonna So am I, but I just I'm going based on biblical like Well, I know Bible what I'm gonna times. be I know what I'm gonna be Googling tonight. So we'll have a so for the folks at home, we'll have a follow up to uh who listens in on the first night of sex culturally. Uh and we'll post the clip. Yeah, for I'll you take guys. notes for that one. Yeah. We'll uh <laughs> we'll make this happen. <laughs> oh god. All right, so we Maybe it was the Egyptians. Egyptian. Let's not guess because that could, you know, offend some people if you're just like, I'm going based guessing on Bible. random. I'm still going based on Bible. It's like guessing Bible. random things. It might be Jewish or Egyptian or I, feel like I don't it's, know. It's, it might, it's something weird. It might be the Belgians who don't listen to us <laughs> anymore. <laughs> okay, I mean, like, it's kind of weird, but like. <laughs> What's up, weirdos? Producer Sean here. You thought the surprises were done, didn't you? Due to popular demand, we're happy to announce the launch of our official merch store. It's live now at store.don'tmakeitweird.net. You can find t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, phone cases, and even our exclusive buffalo pint glass. And more! Every penny of profit from the merch store goes right back into the show to pay for hosting, equipment, and software expenses. We're 10 episodes in, and the support from you guys has been amazing. If you're a fan of the show and you want to further support our ability to make more content, this is the absolute best way to do it. Once again, that's store.don'tmakeitweird.net. Store.don'tmakeitweird.net. Check it out today. And thank you for making it weird with us week after week. We don't judge. Speaking of weird. <laughs> Speaking of weird, we are going to be bringing out another new segment today. This is producer Sean's brainchild. It's called Weird Takes. Tell us about it, Sean. Yeah, so I asked our community to give us some controversial or pop unpopular opinions on writing or literature in general, and I got a few responses, and I want to pass them by you guys and get your gut reaction. All right, let's do this, baby. I'm ready. Right on. So number one is from Josh Patrick Riley on Twitter. JP. People talk about writing after whiskey slash claw, and that's all well and good, but I've come... <clears throat> I've come up with some of my wildest story ideas after my nightly melatonin. What can I say? I go hard. <laughs> so he's saying that, like, if he's kind of half asleep, he comes up with some crazy shit for his stories is, is what I'm getting. So I, th- there's two ways to take this. Um, melatonin is produced naturally through sleep, but it's also a supplement you can take if you suffer from insomnia. So I'm assuming that he takes it. melatonin supplements. But it could be just he had a nap and then wrote afterwards. <laughs> oh, so God, who yeah. knows? I mean, all right. So I'll go first if you don't mind, Dina. Um, as weird as it sounds, most of my best ideas kind of I, – I, I'm usually pretty sober for them. Um, maybe I should try drinking or taking some melatonin more. Maybe I'll get better ideas. I, maybe, maybe that's why I'm a basic ass bitch. I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm interested. Dina, what about you? What, where, where, where do your best ideas come from? 
My best ideas are after a glass and a half of wine. Um, however, yeah, it's very, it's a very like just a tiny I have buzz. A timeline. Yeah, I have a very specific timeline, and then after that, nope, I can't keep writing. I have to watch TV, Arrested Development, or whatever the fuck. Like. Um, best show ever. I, but I also take melatonin, um, and I don't really experience what he's talking about. I I go straight to – well, I take my melatonin in the morning, and then like I go to sleep at night. But like, Well, my interpretation um, was like he takes melatonin and then purposely stays up. <laughs> you know what I mean? How like some yep. people do that with uh, Ambien? Like, in, yep. like um, Adderall or whatever. No. Ambien. Oh, well, uh, opposite of Adderall, but yeah. <laughs> I, I've never taken drugs. I – Stand by that. That's it okay. We'll, we'll 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 have your back. Yeah. It's okay. Like, Ambien like, is a, is another like sleep what is helper. Ambien? It's a very oh, okay. very strong sleep supplement. Yeah, like melatonin kind of naturally helps you oh. fall asleep. It's natural stuff. Ambien's like um, taking a hammer to yeah. the head. <laughs> yeah, and people who like I like that force themselves to stay awake on Ambien. They do crazy fucked up shit. Like, yeah, <sighs> we won't go into that. anyway. Dope. Is it like Florida with bath salts? Like, yeah, pretty much. There you go. That's, <laughs> this is what the rest of the country does. Right people. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The next right. one. The next one from friend of the show, Sam Odjorn. Is that how to say his name? I think so. I think so. That's how I say it. Sam Odjorn. The wordslinger. The wordslinger. By the way, when this book um, eventually comes out, his book, Eighth Warning, is freaking sick. I can't wait for you guys to see it when he eventually publishes it. I've heard of really good it's things. good. Sorry, go on. Yeah. His uh, weird take is despite being notoriously hard to market, genre mashups can be absolute and unparalleled gold when written well. <sighs> this is a great totally one. Agree. Gina, you start us. I I totally agree. I love books that like have those type of mashups. I am not the type of writer that can do that most of the time, I don't think. But I could definitely see Sam being like really good at that. And I have read several books that I can't think of right now that are very good at it. Others, not so good. And, and I agree, like 100%. Like it, it all depends on the hand of the author. Because, I mean, I, voice is everything. If the person can tell a good story, you can genre mash mm -hmm. anything up. And, you know, it's funny because a lot of times, like when you're querying, when you're trying to get your book published and – you know, I've sent out like a million ones. So what up at literary agents? Hi, publish me. I'm cool. Um, hey, yeah, I'm, here. I'm here. Just think about me. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, they, they ask you, like, what is your genre of your book? Like, they want to know, are you upmarket? Are you epic I fantasy? Are you whatever? Like, they don't give you a chance to put many mashups in. So a lot of times when people blend, it's kind of difficult because it almost like puts you off because they don't. They don't allow you to, yeah. to say this is what my story is. But if we're going to use Sam's story, again, I'm not going to give any spoilers, Sam. But his story is like post-apocalyptic, sci-fi, fantasy, um, like just a mashup of all of these things. And it's done really well and really interesting. And I remember talking with him about it because he was telling me, he's like, you know, I'm nervous that this might not sell. It might not be commercial. But one of my best examples of that specific mashup is Mark Lawrence. And he and he's done um, like the Prince of Thorns. He's done uh, Red Sister. And all of them are these kind of sci-fi, um, fantasy, post-apocalyptic, uh, just kind of amalgamations that just work beautifully. And so, oh, my God, dog. Um, yeah, I absolutely think that they uh, they can work well. And I think it's a great take. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. And uh, we'll round it out with our favorite whistleblower, Wes Rants. <laughs> we love you, Wes. Uh, Wesley says, <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> Wesley says, declaring an author to be the goat is dumb. You're not going to be the next Hemingway or Tolkien, just like they are not going to be you. Cultural and literary differences make that impossible to compare. Set out to be the greatest of your genre for your time and not someone else's. I mean, so listen, I think that that basic idea applies to anything. I hate the goat title, the greatest of all time for the folks at home. Usually you see a lot in sports world, you know, people are like, well, is it LeBron? Is it Michael Jordan or, you know, Tom Brady or, you know, Joe Montana? Like that's a Homer pick right there. Go 49ers. Um, but like, I think that that's just meant for the talk shows. That's meant to get people to argue. Well, so-and-so is better at this. So-and-so is better mm -hmm. at that. Uh, you just, you can't compare because no one's the same, nor should they be. Like, there's no way you can, uh, you know, going back to 
Hemingway. There's no way you could try to say, well, is Hemingway better than John Steinbeck? It's like, they're different storytellers. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, I feel like everyone has their own yeah. goat. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, Dina, what do you think? Yeah. How, how do you fall on even the discussion of goats? <laughs> like, what does your dog do? He's okay. The Sinjis <sighs> are ah. goats. Um, second of all, uh, <laughs> screaming I, goats. Um, yeah, they really are. I, I don't like comparing authors. I don't appreciate it because for me, like my all time favorite author is Elizabeth or no, uh, Liz Broswell and yeah. Frank Elbaum. And they're just, you can't compare them to other people. And I, I hate when people are like, oh, give me a comp title. I really hate comp titles because my book doesn't sound yeah. like anybody. Like you've read one of my books. It doesn't sound like anybody else. It doesn't have a story. Like, And I'm not saying that like every story has already been told. And I get that. There's nothing new under the sun. But I, I don't – my voice doesn't really match with anybody else. Like, And when you give a comp title or a comp author, it's like you're expecting yeah. that. And yeah, they're no, not I, that. I, I agree. And I think that – you know, I remember I'm, I'm not even going to try to paraphrase a quote, but there was like something I saw po like going around where they're like, I never understood the competition between authors. Like, well, you know, I get so mad, you know, uh, you know, I'm mm -hmm. better than so and so or blah, blah, blah. It's like, think about readers, man. They don't they don't give a shit. Like once they're done reading the book, they're, they're not like, well, yeah. I'm just done reading now. It's like, no, OK, give me the next book. Give me the next book and something else like they just want to constantly consume like. Mm -hmm. There's enough space for all of us. Like, there's not like a finite <laughs> number of books you're allowed to read in your lifetime. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think the goat title right. silly. So I think that's a good take by Wes. And we would like to hear your weird takes. If you've got some controversial writing opinions, if you've got some hot takes, if you just want to hear us say your name on air, then send it to hashtag weird takes. And you can have a chance for us to discuss it, for us to rip it apart or to praise it. And maybe, maybe we'll bring you on on a future episode if you give us a really good weird take. So, guys, again, check us out. Hashtag weird takes. Get your controversy now. We are now at our portion of the show where we can choose our own or your own adventure. You guys get to pick what's the next insane story from the Dina Corn herself, Dina Soros. Dina, what do the folks have to choose from? Loading. Your dog's um, judging you so hard right now. It's like, I don't even want to look at you. This is embarrassing. Yeah, he is. We have <clears throat> the time I survived a mall fire, the time that my dad and my little sister and I had convinced my mother that I had been kidnapped, or my first near death <laughs> experience. I, was I feel like you've almost died a lot of times. Like I die, at le I almost die at least once a week. <laughs> like my goodness, I'm so excited for these. These I are gonna be know. amazing. So for I'm folks at home, luck. we'll have a poll up. You can check us out at home. You can go. You can let us know what the next story that you're gonna tell is. So, guys, it's been a pleasure. I can't. I, I love our family time together. And next episode, yeah. me. Producer Sean, are going to get to do it together. I hope he'll let me sit on his lap. So where it's time to get out of here. It's time to go home. We love you all so much for listening. We love you guys so much for being a part of this, for interacting, for being a part of our show. We can't wait to get 10 more with you guys. Hopefully a lot more than 10, but, you know, 10's a big number. We're excited. <laughs> I've got bigger goals than 10. Shit, Daniel. Okay, fine. I'm God damn it. 2,000. All right, Dina. All right, that's fair. Yeah, that's a good start. All right. I don't have that many stories. <laughs> yeah, at that point, we're going to be outsourcing our stories. Oh, so, shit. guys, come up with your good stories, yeah. guys. We're going to have to have some writers on the show. <laughs> we're going to have some real writers on the show. All right, guys. You can find me on Twitter at DanQWritesThing. D-A-N-Q writes thing, singular. Not dank. Rain. You bully. It's dank. Dina, where can the folks find you? You can find me and my mixed match makeup with my tan at Dinosaurs D, D. on Twitter. That's Big D. D. <laughs> and producer Sean, where can the folks find you? Well, um, after I refresh my drink, I'll probably inhale a super burrito. Ooh. 
Ooh, inhaling a Ooh, super burrito. burrito. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening. We will see you all next week. Jazz hands. The Don't Make It Weird podcast, hosted by Daniel Quigley and Dina Soros. Produced by me, Sean Holden. Theme song is Swing Rabbit Swing by Amaria. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for the video version of this show and find the audio version on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have an unusual or controversial opinion about writing that you'd like to see featured on the show, send it to us on Twitter with hashtag weird takes, and we just might discuss it on a future episode. <laughs>